So quite often reminiscent sessions are thought of as purely a, a, a planned out large group session. Reminiscence can be structured or opportunistic and in the opportunistic way it forms part of the, the care plan. So sometimes care workers will be working with people and certain parts of the, the, the service user or the resident's life will come up and more often than not that's not fed back to um, you know, the activities coordinator and the idea is to two words in your title and the second one's coordinate and that's a pulling together of all the elements of the person's social identity and to provide activities um, so when you're running the group you can do it one-to-one -one. you can do it with pairs with them or you leading it you can do small groups you can do large groups Session formats can be more of a thera therapeutic model where there's a, a set number of weeks, same people attend at the same time, same place. Or it can be a classic sort of roll on, roll off. So people just turn up whenever they feel the urge to turn up. And I've always thought that's more uh, useful in the average care setting. There's a classic reminiscence of the past. And there's also... Um, almost getting people to talk about the future, which is quite unusual in care settings. People don't tend to do it, but to get them to talk about what they want to achieve, maybe over the next few months or next year or next few years. Um, and I think that's a valid, a valid tool to use with people, especially if you're trying to plan out activity sessions as well. Um, you've got autobiographical or... Um, biographical so the person can run it completely on their own once you get them up and running or you can be part of the process to stimulate it and that depends really on the person's abilities and cognitive abilities as well types of reminiscence you've got narrative which is factual accounts of the past and i'll be quite honest with you um narrative quite often isn't always agreed that the storylines are what actually happened and sometimes family members and that will disagree with what's been said it doesn't really matter it's the person that you're working with's view of what happened rather than a general shared view of what happened i know that sounds strange in society we're always trying to reach an agreed view of reality well, when you're working reminiscence, that doesn't really matter. Um, instrumental is another form of reminiscence. And it's the idea that you're using past experience to solve current problems. So that's really, I hate to, to use the term, but it's almost like a, a bordering on counselling. where You're getting the person to work through their own problems and their past um, experiences and how they apply to the problems they're facing now to, to find solutions. Integrative uh, basically means gaining meaning um, on past events. And you'll find quite a lot of people are trying to work out, or work through things that happened to them 20, 30, 40 years ago. One gentleman had been um, a serial philanderer and his wife had passed away, but he would talk to me quite often about his regrets about how he treated his wife and what he got up to. And um, really he was trying to gather meaning and come to terms with his own, his own past. Um, transmissive. So uh, the idea of passing on wisdom. And I've done a lot of reminiscence, I'd say most of it, or a big chunk of it has been transmissive where I'm a great listener and I'm a very curious guy that I, I wanted to learn. Uh, so quite often some of the older people would sit there and teach me stuff and I was quite happy to, to listen to that and take that on board. Um, escapist, so escaping from reality, which some people have their own view of reality and that's fine. And the other final one would be a, a, an obsessive, so they're stuck on an issue. And that's quite 
normal actually if something's had a traumatic effect on someone will ruminate on that for a long period of time and I'd say to you again we're not counsellors but the only thing we can do is allow that to run its course so quietly listen even when you've listened to the point where you have had enough for yourself so I hope that's helpful and I'll talk to you a little bit about session planning and that in the next video